Comparing the probabilities of positive outcomes across multiple groups may seem straightforward when using logistic regression. However, extracting meaningful insights from logistic regression and interpreting results clearly can be challenging. So, in this video, we'll explore how to visualize model results as predicted probabilities, we'll cover extracting probabilities and odds ratios to get significant differences between all groups pairwise, not just relative to the reference category, Additionally, we'll learn how to create publication-ready tables in Microsoft Word format, obtain real odds for different categories, easily generate model equations, and much more. We'll work with the Titanic survival dataset from the car data package. We'll explore the probability of survival for different passenger classes after the tragic Titanic accident. A quick glance at the simple cross table already reveals that more people from the first class survived than died, while many more people from the third class perished. But this intuition alone doesn't provide concrete numbers such as probabilities or odds of survival, and that's why we need to ask logistic regression for it. Logistic regression can be performed by using the GLM function with the binomial family. This family enables us to model binary outcomes and calculate survival probabilities for each passenger class. Since a picture is worth a thousand words, let's start by visualizing the model results. We'll use the sjplot package and an intuitive plot model function to display the effect of the passenger class predictor on survival probability. And the results are immediately clear. The higher the class, the greater the chances of survival. Specifically, the probability of survival in the first class exceeds 60%, while in the third class, where Leonardo DiCaprio was, it's approximately 25%, more than twice as low. Seems like rich people always come out on top, don't they? By the way, this plot can be easily saved in the format, quality and size you need for publication. And speaking of publishing our results, wouldn't we also want to report the exact probabilities, odds ratios and their confidence intervals? Absolutely! To do that, we'll need to extract those precise numbers from our model. You might be tempted to use the famous summary function for this purpose. However, this summary function doesn't provide any probabilities or odds ratios. Instead, it shows the log odds for the first class along with the differences in log odds between the first and the other classes, second and third. These differences are technically log odds ratios, but the first line itself only shows log odds, not log odds ratios. This can be quite confusing. That's why we'll introduce a fantastic function that will solve all these problems for us in one go. Specifically, the imminence e function from the imminence e package provides all we need. It consists of five clear parts. Our model object, the pairwise argument, which compares all passenger classes against each other, the name of our predictor, the type equals response argument, which transforms log odds into probabilities, and log odds ratios into more intuitive odds ratios. Finally, the infer equals true argument adds the good stuff, 95% confidence intervals for the odds ratios and p-values for the probabilities. But that's not all. It means automatically corrects those p-values for multiple comparisons using the Tuki method, which decreases the probability of discovering nonsense, also known as type 1 error. Now, let's interpret our results. First, we can examine the exact probabilities of survival for each passenger class and see if they are statistically significant. The p-values associated with these probabilities test the null hypothesis that the probability of survival is 50%. In other words, they tell us if the chance of surviving is equal to the chance of dying. Are you sure about that? Yes, I am. Let's consider another example. If we take a smaller subset of our data, we find a survival probability of approximately 
and this implies that the probability of dying is roughly 54%, which is not far from the 50% value our null hypothesis assumes. Additionally, the 95% confidence intervals include the 0.5 value from our null hypothesis. That's why this p-value is not significant. Now, let's look back at our actual results. The probability of survival for first-class passengers is 61.9%. Crucially, the confidence intervals don't include 50% and they stay above 50%. This means first-class passengers are significantly more likely to survive than die. On the other hand, the probability of survival for third-class passengers is only 25.5%, well below 50%. Since their 95% confidence intervals also exclude 50% and fall below it, we can say that the probability of survival is significantly lower than the probability of dying which in this case would be a staggering 74.5%. Just let it sink for a moment. Now, pause the video and see if you can interpret the probability of survival for the second class passengers yourself. So we've seen that survival probabilities differ between groups, but we need odds ratios and p-values to determine if these differences are statistically significant. Thus, let's interpret odds ratios next. In the first class, the odds of survival are approximately 2.16 times or 116% greater than in the second class. And this difference is statistically significant. Similarly, the odds of survival in the first class are roughly 4.74 times or 374% higher than in the third class which is also significant. Lastly, passengers in the second class have odds of survival approximately 2.2 times or 120% greater than those in the third class. Again, statistically significant. Those rich folks, right? But let's get serious for a moment. While interpreting odds ratios greater than 1 is straightforward, Sometimes you encounter odds ratios lower than 1, which can be a bit trickier to understand. But here is a handy technique I use all the time. Instead of using pairwise in the immense function, we can use pairs reverse equals true to flip the odds ratios. In our case, this will give us three odds ratios all below 1, because all of them were above 1 before flipping, so we don't actually need to do that, but let's do it anyway for the sake of example. For instance, instead of comparing first class to the second class, we can reverse the comparison and focus on second class relative to the first class. Specifically, passengers in second class were 0.46 times as likely to survive compared to passengers in first class. This translates to 53.7% decrease in odds of survival for second-class passengers relative to first-class. The two other odds ratios are interpreted in a similar manner. Now, you might wonder why the odds ratios for second to first-class are not simply minus 116%, given that the odds ratios for first to second-class were 116%. The reason lies in the nonlinear nature of odds and probabilities, which I discussed in a previous video. If you are curious, feel free to check it out. In any case, by using pairs reverse true, you can turn any odds ratio positive, making interpretation easier. But what will definitely make your life much easier is the ability to present your results in an aesthetically pleasing format rather than the raw output we typically see in the R console. We'll use the fantastic GT summary package and its remarkable table regression function. This amazing function can create a publication-ready table with just three arguments. The model object, the exponentiate equals true option, which transforms log odds ratios into regular odds ratios and the add pairwise contrasts equals true setting, 
which allows us to compare all categories with each other rather than just against a reference category. The rest of the code is not important here, but it provides a glimpse into how GT Summary can customize your table's appearance, which I've already covered in a separate video. And the best part is that we can export this fancy table in Microsoft Word or PNG format for convenient use. I personally do this almost every day. And since it saves me a lot of time, it's really useful. And if you found this video useful so far, please consider giving it a thumbs up and joining the channel. Now, sometimes we need to report the model equations, right? But writing equations manually can be a huge challenge. Thankfully, the extract EQ function from the Equatiomatic package automates this process for us. Last but not least, let's address the classic question. What are the odds? Believe it or not, logistic regression can actually tell us that. Here's how to find the odds of survival for each passenger class. First, we use the immense function to get the log odds for each category. By default, immense displays log odds when we don't explicitly specify the type equals response argument. Next, we we'll simply exponentiate the log odds to convert them into actual odds. Since odds are centered around one, here's what we find. The odds of survival for first class passengers are 63% higher than the odds of dying. Second class passengers have 25% lower odds of survival compared to their odds of dying. Third class passengers face a significant 66% lower chance of survival relative to their odds of dying. And if you want to significantly step up your data science game, just watch the immense video next if you still haven't. Believe me, you won't regret it.